Written on an E-plan. Again, this is Roland, Roland Junk from E-plan Canada. I want to show you how efficient engineering is when a plan becomes E-plan. How do I want to show you this? Well, it's with our partner, Rital. I came across a really interesting tool not too long ago, the Rital Configuration System. This configuration system, as you can see here, Rital Canada RIX, is one of these. It's actually a configurator that allows me to pick a part, specific part, and when I actually have selected that part number, uh, let's say I want a freestanding panel here, just to show you very quickly. So freestanding, there we go, next. Um, let's take one as an example, the 8205. You can see it actually narrows it down. It's a 1200 by 2000 panel, quite a big panel here. And you can start running through the retail configuration, I'll come back to it, to pick the right part. In ePlan, we know what ePlan is, right? It gives me a schematic. In the schematic, I can generate a few different reports, reports, all kinds of different reports. Could be a parts list, could be a bill of material, could be a connection list, whatever. They just generate like this, and they give you the information that is pulled out directly from the schematics. So here we have a wire list, we have a... Um, a list of all the components, and now I'm ready to place these components onto a panel. How do we do this? Typically, we go in here and we just create a new layout. This new layout is supposed to actually be attached to a mounting location, a mounting location that was used inside my schematics. So here I'm just going to call it Rix A1. Okay, this is just a name, and there we get like the 3D layout. Usually, I would actually go in here and enter the panel and its accessories. Today, I'm going to show you something that really made me fall off my chair. ePlan Data Portal, Rital Parts with the Rital Configuration System. So here, I'm going to do the same thing. 8205-500. This is my filter. This is the part number I want. This is the panel I want. But I want to make sure I don't forget any parts like the side panels, the plins, whatever. Like all these parts that are, you know, really nice to use, I want to use them. So I'm going to do a search on the panel. As you can see here, here's my panel. And look at this nice icon here a guitar. You're rocking. This is the Rital configuration system, I guess. This is why they opted for this guitar. And I don't know if it's a guitar. It just looks like a guitar and sounded good. Retail configuration system. The same system that I just opened on my Microsoft Edge inside ePlan. So now, what are the most popular things I may forget or may want to add? Well, first of all, I want to add the side panels. I may want to add like a uh, cable plin down at the bottom. Maybe, yeah, who knows, a light, maybe some comfort handles, maybe, you know, some wiring pockets. I can choose on and on and on. I can even go and drill deeper into other options that haven't been uh, shown here. I can now go next, next, and I can generate the ePlan data. And this is cool because I no longer have to do like I showed you in these other videos where I imported the file. Well, what did I show you in the other videos? I showed you I was in here. I selected whatever options I wanted, right? This was my previous video on the RICS because I understood it like that. I went through the steps. Of course, the idea behind the scene here is to help salespeople make sure that you have the right components that actually all fit together. You can ask, uh, of course, order the component. Or I showed you also here how you can export this in a parts list and then import it back into ePlan. Why? They actually have a data portal generator that gives me the right part right here, right at the tip of my fingers. So exactly what this is all about, right? And of course, inside RICS, outside of ePlan, Exactly the same RIC system is now here on the ePlan side 
putting together that data so I can just simply relax, go and get a coffee, maybe watch some videos. Remember in ePlan, we have all these uh, different tutorials where you can watch uh, how you can do things. I'd love to see a, a, a video on Rick's. Unfortunately, there's none yet. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it. But yeah, you can watch here some tutorials in these tutorials and, and we don't express ourselves often enough. We even have tutorials for beginners in the electric P8 section here. So if you want to discover a little bit about ePlan, we have a tutorial for beginner, we have tutorial for experts, really cool. Anyways, coming back to my rig system, so it worked actually for me, I can now place that device because it was successfully put together by RICS for me in ePlan, and I can just take that part and place it. And no extra work anymore, there it is. It's perfectly configured, everything is there. I don't even have to do any, anything. I could place another one next to it. I don't want to, I don't want to bait them. Now, of course, I'm back into ePlan. I have my regular surfaces. I can say, let's look for specifically mounting panels. Let's look at the front view. If I already have some standard, let's say, um, docks and rails and whatever that, you know, are, are actually and could be used. Hey, no problem. Just go ahead and place it, you know, and start filling it out with your components. So zoom in, uh, put together here all the components, just drag and drop them. Fairly easy. I mean, if I'm just going to show you one example here. I have a few terminal strips. I'm just going to drag and drop them and have those ones placed automatically. So, you know, this is the first terminal strip, let's say, up there. It just places it perfectly in line. Whoops, it's a little bit too big. Let's place the second one. So you can see this This was a little bit um, too big. Do I have another one? No, let's reposition this one here. Uh, so you can actually delete it if you want. And by deleting it, you know what? It doesn't disappear. It just reappears here in the list. And you could even, if you wanted to, go and pull it out again and just, hey, Let's drag and drop it, and this time let's place it here, and bingo, it's going to be placed there. But nevertheless, the idea is just to drag and drop all the components that are not yet placed. Some of these components actually go even on a door. Uh, this is fine. You just open this. You have the door here. Uh, you want to place like some push buttons here. You can just drag and drop it. Say, okay, I'm going to place it with a uh, bit of a control here where we say we're going to put 75 millimeters intermediate distance between them, center, center. So you can just place them there like this, boom, 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 it places. Now, what I wasn't really careful about in this case here is I actually picked also the contacts. So, of course, if you want to place these contacts, you can place them. You don't have to necessarily stick to, to, to this. You can select them, also, of course, like this. There are all kinds of different ways where you can, you know, get rid of them. They are not gone. They're just there to be placed at a later point in time. You want to take one object, just place it and reposition it in a different spot. Just go ahead. And what's nice about this digital twin is all the documentation that is required to fabricate this is ready, is ready to go. I mean, it's, it's maybe not there yet, but it is very close to be generated. All you have to do is generate the project reports. <clears throat> what it will do in this particular case, it will actually determine, based on your template, what exactly you want, what kind of documents you want. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here about documents like the docs and the rails, just to show you, docs and the rails. These are the docs and the rails that we actually picked, right? You can see them here, you can see the individual components. I could even, if, if I wanted to make it even better, I actually do, let's show you, a small list here that is really cool. It's an enclosure, uh, manually placed enclosure legend. And in this enclosure legend, what I'm doing is I am picking very specifically more details than what is typically there. Look at this. I'm basically here giving you the length in millimeters and inches of every single wire, dock, or rail here. So you can go in front of the grinder and just grind them down and place them. Really cool. This, this is the first step that you'll have to do. Second step you'll have to do is you'll have to drill the holes. I mean, you don't really have to do much. All you have to go is go in here, drill the holes. You can see these are all the holes for the din rails. 
uh, if I change a DIN rails, you will see this appear here with different holes. Uh, same thing for the different uh, pilot lights or push buttons that I placed here. Okay. Now, what you can do with Rital is you can use their mod center. Uh, they would actually take one of your projects, just send them that by email here, send by email. The Rital person in the mod center will open it and directly send it to the Perforex here machine and this would enable the Perforex to do all the drilling for you. So that, that's done then in the Mod Center. We have some interesting offers. You can check it out if you never use the Mod Center, how you can use that Mod Center. Really awesome because they deliver you all the holes, everything based on you know the objects that you place. And remember, if you add something, let's say you add a fan. I'm just going to add a fan here. Uh, small fan. Uh, fan are usually recognized inside Eplan as electrical components. Uh, there are small motors, very small motors, not really big. So here, let's see where my motors are. Motors, motors here. Uh, motors that are coming from Rital. Here we go. Very small fans, a 230, 115, top term. Uh, maybe this one here, fan filter. So let's take it, and here you go. It is now an object that will basically require, and this is the fun part, for every surface that you choose and you place that same device again, X number of time, it will actually give us the exact, so let's put one maybe more up here. So, because typically you go on, 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 on one side and you go on the other side, right? And you place it here so that you have some air circulations going through. Well, this will be in the drilling aspect here, will actually require some additional surfaces to be not only drilled, but also punched with a, a, a rectangle to fit that fan. So you will see that from only two surfaces, which were the back plate and these doors, I now have five surfaces that require a hole. Now, if you send that to the mod center, you don't even have to tell them where the holes go. You can see wherever I did place one of these fans, it actually has now a rectangle and four drilled holes very precisely here with all the data. So that is the kind of data that is sent to the um, to the mod center. Now, last but not least, are all the documents, all the documentation that can be actually generated to place the components. And here we also have an interesting feature. I don't want to go there too too deep but an interesting feature for the power dissipation, the return, and maybe in a different video a little bit later, I'll try to explain that. So really, this was ePlan and Rital, how really the RIC system inside ePlan can save you a lot of time, a lot of errors, the perfect part every time. So again, ePlan, as we say, it's efficient engineering when the plan becomes ePlan. This was Roland from ePlan. Hey, you want to see more videos? Subscribe to the channel. I think it's the first time I say that. Subscribe to the channel. But, you know, I guess a lot of people like it. Thanks. Bye.